everyone, it's Nicole from KenHub and in this tutorial, we'll be looking at the muscles of the shoulder girdle. So here's one of the main images that we'll be looking at in today's tutorial. And we'll be looking at the shoulder muscles that you can see here, but we'll also be looking at the muscles deep to that, which you can see as we make the superficial layer of muscle transparent. The muscles of the shoulder girdle help to support the bones that connect the arms, specifically the humerus, which is highlighted here, to the appendicular skeleton on either side of the body. And today we're going to be looking at eight muscles in total, and for each of these I'll cover their origin, insertion, innovation, and function. I'll start by looking at the muscles that are viewed best posteriorly, as we can see here, and then I'm going to flip our body around to talk about the muscles that can be seen best anteriorly. So without further ado, let's begin with the muscles of the shoulder girdle that can be seen best from a posterior view. So let's begin by looking at this huge muscle, which we can see here in our image. And as you can see, it's a pretty large muscle. And in fact, it's the largest muscle of the shoulder girdle, and it's known as the trapezius muscle. This big triangular muscle of the upper limb is a flat muscle, and superiorly we can see that it runs from the occipital bone of the skull and inserts into the lateral third of the clavicle. The middle part of this muscle originates from the spinal processes of T1 to T4 vertebrae, which is just here, and inserts on the acromion of the scapula, which is just here. Moving down our image again, we can see that the inferior part of the trapezius originates from the spinal processes of T5 to T12 vertebrae and inserts on the spine of the scapula. The trapezius muscle is innervated by the 11th cranial nerve or the accessory nerve and by nerves of the cervical plexus. The trapezius has a few functions, including stabilizing and securing the shoulder blade, as well as facilitating lateral flexion of the head, as well as dorsal flexion of the head and cervical vertebral column. If we take a peek underneath the trapezius muscle, we can see that there are some more shoulder girdle muscles underneath, and these are known as the rhomboid muscles, and consist of a major muscle and a minor muscle. First, let's look at the rhomboid major muscle. The rhomboid major muscle has its origins on the spinal processes of the T1 to T4 vertebra just here, and inserts on the medial border under the spine of the scapula just here. It's innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve, which is a branch of the brachial plexus, and as you can probably guess by looking at the direction of the muscle fibres, functions to adduct and elevate the scapula, as well as rotating the inferior angle of the scapula towards the vertebral column. Moving on up now, just superior to the rhomboid major muscle, we have the rhomboid minor muscle. The rhomboid minor muscle has its origins on the spinous processes of the C6 and C7 vertebrae and inserts onto the medial border of the scapula just above the spine of the scapula. It's also innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve and performs pretty much the same functions as the rhomboid major muscle, that is, elevation and adduction of the scapula. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.